All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Philippe Tipo. I'm the cell director at VoIP.MS, and I'm with Rui Vaz, a support specialist at the Dial Fire. Uh, today, we will talk about how VoIPMS services and Dial Fire um, services or um, software can be integrated together to boost your sales operation. Dial Fire is a dialing platform, um, and uh, Rui will be a, uh, will tell us more about it. So, Rui, it's all yours. Uh, thank you. Uh... First and foremost, thank you, uh, Philip, for this invitation opportunity to speak about Dialfire. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, uh, Dialfire is a dialing platform and uh, and it is a dialer first and foremost. Um, but I would say um, that to say j that it's just a dialer would be a rather uh, big understatement. And um, Dialfire is, is more than just dialer. It's, it's it's a flexible tool, and um, it's cloud based, very intuitive to use and to implement as well. So um, I think the natural question that will pop up um, for this webinar is, I mean, for you, for the customers of Voip uh, MS is what Dialfire is exactly. So I'm gonna be speaking a little bit about that and if it's something for them. Um, I would say, um, maybe I can uh, talk a little bit more about the, what I think your customers usually do in, the, in their phone campaigns. And I, I would say that most of them most likely in their day-to-day -day business um, reach out to um, uh, partners, customers, and leads, prospects by using soft phones or just regular uh, desktop phones. And uh, usually they just decide to call someone, look up a number, dial it, and hopefully a conversation takes place. So uh, I would say that if you are uh, using a VoIP uh, phone application to run any kind of uh, classic phone campaign, this the standard process is not very efficient. And this is where Dialfire comes along sees a need, see, sees a need in the market. And um, yeah, so the standard process is not very efficient and um, it's, it's actually a waste of, of precious time. And it's time that you spend usually looking up for numbers, manually dialing and, uh, and then sometimes misdialing as well. Uh, time spent waiting for people, uh, whether they pick up the phone or not, and or people that never pick up. And at some point, you realize that from maybe one hour of, of your work time, maybe you spend 10 or 20 minutes actually uh, speaking and reaching out to uh, the person who which you actually wanted to reach out to. Uh, so yeah, this is the traditional way of, the, uh, uh, of, of reaching out to the customers. Of, of course, um, the, the, the classical phone campaign is, can be very effective yeah, because uh, you're, you're in the comfort of your office, of your own house, and you can reach out to your, to your customers by phone to present your product, services, or scheduling appointments, or just generating leads for a contractor as well. We have such customers um, conducting survey surveys as well, but uh, if it if it takes too long to to reach out to them, obviously you're losing time and and therefore money. Um, so I guess the the next the next question that that um, that pops up is what what can you do about it? So um, uh, what can you change? In your uh, in your sales process, so that it gets more productive, more efficient. The this example I just uh, spoke about is is the is the traditional uh, process, but it obviously does not have to be like that. Uh, you can have much more success by changing the way you conduct your phone campaigns. That's when when Dalfire comes along, and. Perhaps many of, of you that are listening 
already heard about phone uh, campaign automation software. Uh, and uh, we're probably wondering whether you could use it or not for your for your business. Um, the answer will most likely uh, depend on the scale of the projects you have going on. Um, if it's small, maybe not, but uh, starting at, at a certain uh, number of contacts you want to reach out to is, is really, um, um, it's a tool that really brings you uh, something. So let's suppose that you're um, reaching out to a, a larger uh, contact list audience and you want to track the results um, systematically and measure your, your campaign success. In that uh, situation, you, mo you will most definitely benefit uh, um, from a campaign automation tool like Dialfire because Dialfire will allow you to uh, work more effectively and cost efficiently. And um, in my opinion, um, calling manually will just not be an option. And I think um, uh, you should um, consider Dialfire. But obviously there are other tools out there and uh, you have to make a decision to about which tool you, you're going for. So I guess the next question that would come up would be uh, why Dialfire? Well, Dialfire, because um, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, it's, it's not just a dialer. Right? It's an understatement to say that it's just a dialer. It's, it's more than a dialer. And if you are still manually sending emails to your contacts or uh, preparing uh, uh, reports uh, to, to your colleagues or management, collecting leads on websites social or social media ch uh, channels as well, and uh, adding them to your co uh, calling campaign, then Dialfire comes and does all that automatically. Okay, uh, and and allows you to organize your campaign execution um, systematically. So it runs in the system, automatic, and it's really efficient. And um, not only it will increase the productivity, but also brings, in our opinion, brings transparency and accountability to your campaigns because then you can measure uh, things. In order, because in order to increase um, the, the performance of your campaign, obviously there are some um, questions you, you have to answer, like uh, uh, what is my return on investment, for example, or um, which, which of my agents is performing uh, better, or which, for example, you buy some leads and you wanna know which lead provider um, is, is the best so you can compare through the different leads, which one is, is the best. So uh, obviously an effective tool will give you reports and statistics that will, um, will provide um, an insight into your campaigns. And, and Dialfire does that. It automatically tracks um, the work hours of your team to allow you to manage their time better. And when it comes to training and quality control, it also enables you to monitor and listen to ongoing conversations. You can also record them, set up an automatic recording for them. Can and, you show us? Uh, uh, can you show us a little bit uh, of a dashboard or what it looks like for for you day to day users, or not not the the agent, but for a manager? So yes, sir. All right. So um, I give permission to the microphone. Um, so I, I think I mentioned in the beginning that it's a cloud-based um, solution. So it runs on your on on the browser. It's um, optimized for Chrome or Firefox. So it runs on your browser. You basically create create a uh, uh, an account. It has a name. You log in in the browser. And I was I think I was just um, mentioning that um, as a tool, you can record. Uh, conversations from the beginning to the end automatically. You can also record them manually if you just want to have a specific part of, of the conversation. 
And I think I was then mentioning um, the guiding menu. So in this menu, you can um, listen to the conversations uh, live for other calls. And um, because in Dialfire, you can split, uh, no, Dialfire splits the uh, calls into two different channels, the agent and the, and the uh, customer you are able to do the so-called uh, whispering where you you give instructions to to the agent for either for turning purposes uh something like that or when for example when some agents are starting the company in the company and they don't know um how to pitch or how to speak with their with the customers um they can come maybe you can give them temporary access to the guiding menu uh, so that they can listen to their colleagues um, to see how, how they handle uh, the calls, for example. So not only uh, you can listen, you can also uh, send message to the agents here as well. And there's also here in history part where you can you can see the um, the last edits that were done to the contacts as well. Uh, so as you can see, everything runs on the browser. And uh, yeah, I was speaking about the guiding that Dialfire does it, but um, going back to the first question uh, you place, or not the first question, but the um, your introduction that Dialfire is a dialer. Dialfire is a dialer. Yeah, that's the, the simplified um, definition of Dialfire. But what, what Dialfire provides is a, a powerful predictive automatic dialer. And what this uh, predictive automatic automatic dialer does is, like the name implies, it, it predicts um, taking uh, different parameters into account, like for example, the connect rate of your leads, the amount of agents available, uh, the average uh, uh, call time um, of a, uh, uh, that the agents have. So it takes all the, these different parameters and um, it, um, it takes all these different parameters and it calculates how many contacts it has to call um, so that there's at least one connection for, for each agent, okay? So it's um, in comparison to other automation uh, call softwares is, is much more advanced because you do, you do not, um, you do not uh, just set a number of contacts that you have to call and it's a power dollar just calls uh, that number of contacts. It will adapt itself to the this diff uh, to, uh, to th these different parameters that I just mentioned. Uh, there are way, way more than those. Those are just uh, some examples that uh, people can understand. Um, All right. Me. We have a first question. Uh, we, um... The question from Jason is: uh, We are using Active Campaign for a CRM. Uh, what what do these type of integration would look like? So, if I understand correctly, is there uh, a way to integrate uh, CRM with Dialfire, for instance? I know you have a open API, which why you did the integration with WebMS. So, uh, I believe uh, there's possible way to integrate Dalfire to CRM? There, there, is, there is a way, uh, like you mentioned correctly, Dalfire uh, the, has the open um, API communication. People uh, can use the, the API communication that we, uh, that we have. There are some links uh, that you can use. And we also have, we developed some apps which integrate uh, already uh, without having any knowledge uh, regarding programming uh, to certain um, CRMs. And we are constant, constantly developing those apps. Uh, they, they can be found in our do documentation. They, uh, we have, I think, I don't know if I can mention some names, but Pipedrive, UpSpot, um, and others already as an app. Uh, and obviously, we if, if it's not one of these mainstream ones, you can also um obviously integrate with your uh, internal uh, CRM or database using our API communication yeah all right um we have another question uh about the from Len uh Len ask how do call 
get sent to the agent upon a successful contact. So I guess whenever the call get connected, um, how the call uh, is sent to the agent. Um, let me just show you a, a simple uh, campaign. Um, one second. So once they, um, so the, the principle of Dialfire, you create an account, you're an admin, you have all the rights to the account. And obviously then you create the agents to conduct calls in uh, campaigns and tasks where you give them the permission to. So when they access the call area and, and click to uh, call, the dialer starts dialing. And once uh, uh, there's a connection, they will hear beep, beep, beep. And the, the, the so-called call mask will open up. And obviously they will see the call mask. And what you're seeing right now here um, can be changed according to the needs that you have. So let's just say uh, you want to have here, for example, we have some, some uh, customers who are scheduling appointments. So there you can have here a calendar where you're setting up uh, appointment, appointments, for example, uh, to, to visit them, for example, uh, uh, the, those customers on their, on their address, for example. If you if you just want, for example, uh, to set up a um, a um, a follow up, you can follow up, uh, set it up here, and you can set up set up a date and time uh, to follow up on that contact. So let's just say you connect, uh, you get a connection with the customer, and the customer says, um, um, for the moment we are not interested, but perhaps uh, later, uh, you can also set up a, a workflow to uh, have this contact available again, maybe in three months, for example. Okay, and all this information um, that would on this page here will be pre-populated um, before the campaign start. I I assume. Yes, the the idea is that you import a, a contact list either as a CSV file or you integrate with a CRM or a third-party uh, website which sends the, the information to a uh, Dialfire through API uh, communication, like we mentioned before. And um, yeah, the, the information that you, you have can then be assigned to the fields here. So all you see here can, uh, can be changed according to your needs. Uh, this is a simple campaign. So the simple campaign has yeah. this customer details section and here there's a uh, guideline which can be changed as well. And this dispositions that you see here as well can be changed. So for example, you can make a distinction between a contact where you uh, maybe get a connection and aggressively responds that don't call me ever again, um, where you get my number from, and maybe some other one which does decline the uh, offer at that moment, but maybe said maybe later I will be interested. So you can have this uh, distinction between uh, different dispositions and according to this position, uh, have uh, its own uh, task flow and move within the campaign, the contact. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, I would say uh, this is when in the beginning I was saying about the flexibility and being powerful. Yeah, this this uh, dial fire, once there is a connection, it opens up um, like this. You're then already in, uh, connected with the customer. Then you give a uh, a result to the contact. And once you click, uh, click save and X, then uh, depending on the speed that you set up the dialer, because obviously you can uh, set up the dialer to be faster or slower. Uh, depending on 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 whether your leads perhaps are more expensive or less expensive, or whether uh, you just want to be always on on call, or maybe that's not so inter uh, not so important for you. So once you click save and next, once there's a new connection, if there's already a new connection, it, it is put through to you. Uh, otherwise, it it will then pop up a new one. If you want to exit, then obviously uh, you can click save. Um, so yeah. I would say, um, does that answer uh, the question from uh, the viewer? Um, I, th I, would, I would say so. <laughs> I, I think yes. Uh, we have another question about, uh, it, one is, uh, I think it's more more as a comment. Uh, it says uh, your dialer has uh, many of the function uh, of a CRM call notes uh, and so on. Um, and the following comment or question is, uh, can a localization slash masking be used from this as a send number for call IDs? So uh, if I rephrase it, um, can we 
dynamically changed the caller ID based on the location of uh, of of the prospect. So the can my if I am the agent, can my call ID can can change dynamically based on the on the location of the of the prospect. Is it something uh, Delphire is uh, capable of? I know Delphire have a uh, DID validation process uh, to avoid um, fraudulent spoofing and, and these kind of, uh, but let's say you own uh, a local DID in a specific area, is it possible to, uh, to dynamically change the outgoing caller ID based on the location of the prospect? Yes, absolutely. Um, you, you would have, I would say, two ways to go about it. Either you already uh, split it into a different lists, depending on the states. We have customers that do that. You don't have to do that. We do have customers that split it uh, depending on the state. You could do that. And then you have perhaps a, a campaign for Texas and a different one for California, for example. Uh, but you can also uh, have them all in the same list. And then depending on the um, state, we can set up a, a script that if it's uh, California, show this number. If it's uh, Texas, show this number. Uh, so depending uh, on, the, on the state or on the uh, zip code, uh, one can change the, um, the color ID. So the number that is displayed. Yes. Uh, obviously um, th those numbers, like you mentioned, they, they need to be verified uh, and need to belong to the person who who's using it or the company who's the owner, using it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, we have a couple of questions uh, back to back. So <laughs> uh, let's do it. Uh, another one, I have a question from Roy, uh, Roy, from Frank and from David. I'm not forgetting you. I'll be back uh, to it in a second. So... Uh, uh, just one second uh, but the next one is from Len uh, so it's based um, it's a follow-up from uh, the first uh, question about uh, the call, connect, call connection so so it decide the connection by answer uh, supervision um, I'm not too sure to understand the question uh, I get call all day long from bad dialer uh, and the day, delay can be quite long uh okay maybe yeah the between the call connection and the agent uh, the the time lapse between uh the call connection and this, the 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 call that is sent to the agent is there a delay uh be, be, between those two events well, it's just a delay of uh, in the browser uh once there's a connection and and then the call mask opens up uh, so uh, once maybe one second, two seconds. Yeah. I would say so. Um, obviously, if you have a fa a fast computer where every uh, the the browser is running smoothly, uh, should be right away. Uh, right so. away. Okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah, I've been working in uh, call centers, and uh, one of the thing that I, I was happening uh, with my my team uh, was that the agent was was not connected, but the uh, the person on the other side was oh, hello hello uh, is there somebody and uh, they're obviously already waiting just, uh, for for quite wait, quite a long time uh, yeah. yeah so uh, okay that's uh, that's good to know uh, the delay here is very short um, so i think that's answered a question from len uh, simon is asking dialfire is a cloud pbx uh, dialfire is not exactly like a cloud pbx uh, it's a uh, I'm if I'm not mistaken, it's more like a, um, it, it's a dialer for outbound campaign. I think you're also managing incoming calls, but mostly Inbound it's well. a mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly a predictive dialer for outbound. But you don't have all the uh, capabilities of uh, hosted PBX like VoIP MS uh, having like for your businesses with the the all the little. Uh, uh, PBX function, uh, IVR, time time condition, call hunting, call routing, like uh, all the endpoint management, uh, like uh, a traditional hosted PBX, uh, like VoIP MS pro is providing. Uh, so uh, what is separating Dialfire from VoIP MS is the uh, dialing capabilities versus uh, VoIP MS is a traditional hosted PBX or a SIP trunk provider. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, Simone, I think 
it's not exactly uh we cannot really call dial fire as a cloud pbx uh, if i'm not mistaken well i i i would agree with you uh dial fire uh works with different uh, providers that actually do the calls and fires requests for those providers to do the calls that's where you come along what the dot ms and with uh, with this partnership which um, I was not in, in involved in establishing, but I would say it, it, it will really most likely, time will tell, but I would say it's gonna be really a symbiotic relationship uh, because you bring that to the table. Exactly, so and, yeah, we, we bring the, the traditional uh, business phone system and uh, Dalfire is bringing the, the dialing and, and uh, telemarketing a predictive campaign, predictive, yeah it's a predictive dial so all the with, the, with answering machine detect answer. detection as well so it does all, all that good next question is from roy uh, in some of our territories we have to implement an ipbx does dial fire with pbx where we can't use voip ms yes uh definitely uh you can work with dial fire without voip ms uh it's not it's not a problem uh it's uh it's more like when you're using both it's more like you want to have uh everything under the same roof or something like this uh and being able to manage your dids your phone your business phone system and also your contact center uh operation so that's the the overall ecosystem that uh dialfire and voip ms uh, bring to the table but if you want to use uh, an ipbx where voip ms can not be there uh sure uh I'm I'm speaking for uh, for Rui right now, but, but maybe, maybe I can jokingly say, but then if they do, you VoIP MS will not uh, handle their support requests uh, regarding those calls. So uh, if they use a different one, they can do it. Like I mentioned before, Dial Fire is is a dialer and uh, fires requests, and those requests can be handled uh, by VoIP MS. But you can also set up a a different one if for a specific destination you're calling a VoIP MS is not uh, uh, terminating. Yeah. So. The next question you scratch the surface of the answer so uh, I will but there's other uh, variation uh, of it you were talking about uh, uh, answering machine detection uh, here we Frank is asking how does the system deal with Call failure, ex, uh, example, buzzy, uh, reorder tone, answering system, and so on. Does the system analyze these statues before handling the call to the agent? Uh, and does it flag it as a bad number and so on? You can set, um, you can set up call limitations uh, for those cases. And uh, it, it is so that when you import a contact, the contact is, is open and available for all agents to, to work on. The, di the, dial, the dialer dials. Once there's a connection, it, it is put through. If there is, um, for some reason, the, the number is invalid or, or, Buzzy there's, some kind of, or, or there's some kind of issue, uh, the number will not go away from the pool unless there's uh, a certain amount of attempts. And I could not give you an exact number, but it's I think it's over... Uh, uh, 20 uh, attempts to, to such a number. But uh, also it's also maybe important to say that Dialfire as a platform uh, comes as pay as you go and you, you pay uh, for, for when once there is a connection. So uh, in those cases, when a number is invalid, there's no um, call being produced. There's no uh, connection. I mean, the call is being produced. The connection uh, is not, it will not be there. And not build. So, uh, so it will be flagged at some point. It will be flagged in in the process at some point. If uh, after multi multiple attempt, uh, there's no answer, there's no connection. The number ultimately will be flagged as a bad number. Will be discarded uh, because uh, there's no possibility to to get a connection. So if it, it gets a buzzy signal or or whatever answering machine every time, and there's no way to uh, be able to connect the call. Uh, after a specific amount of, of trial, uh, the number will be discarded. 
Yes, and you can uh, set up a call limitation also for uh, for those. And once it reaches a certain number, that it gets the failed state status because even though it will not influence the cost that you're gonna be having, it does influence the the connect rate um, because it's uh, generating more attempts um, and and it, it it makes that the the dollar has more work. Right? It has to dial more. Uh, send more requests. So, I mean, if you can just then remove those contacts which are uh, not doing anything, I mean, you can do. I think more important is the the answering machines that you set up a a call limitation if you're calling answering machines um, a lot. Uh, because, for example, if you're calling B to C customers, it's it's important important to set up such a filter to filter uh, out the answering machines because uh, such a connection most likely will not bring you uh, uh, anything. But if you're calling, for example, B2B, perhaps it's interesting uh, to uh, not use the filter because most companies do have a set up uh, an IVR uh, to get connected to certain departments uh, in the company. So uh, yeah, you have to see which type of customers you're reaching out to and then decide whether you know, whether or not you want to use this this answering machine detection. If if you want to use it, once Dialfire detects the answering machine, it does not put it through to the uh, to the agent. All right, that answer it. Um, last question I have uh, from David R. Uh, can Dialfire be integrated with IP PBX like uh, Tori CX? So um, yeah, uh, Tori CX or Vodia or or vital PBX, any uh, host uh, specific uh, PBXs, is it possible to integrate Dialfire with such PBXs directly? I, I do not. I do not know this th this one specifically. I, I cannot. I can only say that Dialfire as a as a cloud based solution does not have fixed IP addresses. So for the um, the integration with. Uh, other uh, PPX uh, call providers, they would have uh, to have, um, I think it's uh, digest authentication with our uh, registration. We have uh, full on documentation on how to, how to do it. Uh, let me just open it up for you here. So, um, that track. so to tell you more specifically, it should be possible if the uh, provider uh, offers uh, this. So the customer uh, SIP term configuration will only work with Digest authentication. So username and password without registration uh, due to the fact that Dialfire does not have a fixed IP address. Okay. So we've, uh, maybe you can reach out to them and ask them if if it's possible that they offer this, then uh, yeah, should, should be possible, I would say. You have to uh, check uh, with them. All right. Uh, we have another question popping up uh, from Jason uh, about uh, how much demand on the computer does the CRM use? Uh, the CRM part, I think uh, you cannot really answer about it, uh, but the dial fire is cloud-based, cloud so I, the, the, the only uh, CRM, um, um, sorry, processor uh, resources that it's taking, it's from the browser um, so far. So Exactly, uh, and uh, we, we do have here that uh, at least two gigabyte of RAM CPU, just like the minimum of the minimum, and uh, uh, the processor uh, Intel Core 2 Duo or i3, um, yeah, and the um, for the uh, bandwidth, 25 kbit per second for both upload and download. So these are the require the requirements. So like you you mentioned correctly, Dialfire runs on the browser. Um, depending on the browser, if it's Firefox or Chrome, I believe uh, they work differently both browsers. So I I think Chrome. Uh, once less RAM than Firefox. So we generally recommend the customers to use more Chrome, but you can also work with Firefox. Um, so yeah, th those are the, 
minimum technical requirements that we have, which for uh, an up-to-date computer actually it's not it's not uh, it's not that big. Two gigabyte of RAM is not it's not much. But yeah, obviously the the more RAM, like like with any uh, application or any uh, program, uh, the fa the the better your computer, the more uh, the better specification it has, the, the faster it will run. Yeah. Great. Another question. Uh, it's coming up. It's nice. Um, are we going to be reseller for Dial Fire? Uh, if you're talking about VoIP MS, VoIP MS is not uh, will not be a reseller specifically from uh, Dial Fire. Uh, we have uh, an API connected to them, and I will show it a little bit later. But uh, we have the ability to connect your VoIP MS account to uh, to to Dial Fire pretty seamlessly. Um, and I think on the other end, uh, the fire probably have some partner program, some some way to uh, to be able, you will be probably be able to offer Dial fire as a reseller. We do have um, a so-called reseller program, white label program. Uh, it's um, being handled uh, by two colleagues. Um, so yeah, we do we do have it. We do offer the possibility. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us, and then we can arrange for a meeting, and we can um, show you the platform more deeply. Um, obviously, um, we I do hear this presentation. I answer here these questions, but at at any time, if you have any kind of interest, you you you're fully free to book a um, a time slot in our calendar. And uh, we'll gladly have a meeting. And if it's about the reseller program, we can also address it as well. Perfect. So uh, do you have other point that you want to cover in your presentation? No, I think I think um, maybe I could show you because um, a visual is always better than a thousand words. So one one when image or one photo is better than a thousand words, maybe um, I can show you some some screenshots uh, because this is, this is a showcase account. So this is not a live account. There are no agents here uh, working in this account. That's why when uh, I went to the guiding menu here, um, you could not see any agent here listed or, or any edit of the contacts. But we do have here some screenshots. Um, for example, this is how a wallboard will look uh, like. So you you can uh, you then have a link which for example you can open up um, on on a TV in your in your office and uh, this is this this wall board is kind of like um, to gamify the uh, <laughs> the agents work so they can see who's, who's having the, the most success results and uh, yeah this is uh, how it looks like you can also set set up a, a dashboard. Um, which would look like this. This is obviously more for uh, controlling for, for the admins of the account. And for keep KPIs and also, because I think I was already mentioning before, uh, if you want to calculate return on investment um, and you, or you want to have it in, in an Excel file, all those numbers uh, to send to the management or to a contractor, uh, then you can set up uh, reports, for example, such kind of a report uh, where you can see how how long the agent was connected uh, or logged into the uh, to uh, dial fire, how how much talk time it had, handling time as well, work time, and also how many endlings or edits of contacts they had as well. So this is uh, one kind of uh, report activity statistic. We also have um, contact list statistic. Oh, this is a good one because I was uh, mentioning before that perhaps you, <laughs> have, maybe there are some customers who buy leads from uh, Fiverr or um, or they have their own providers, but they have different providers and they buy it at different prices. Um, and then here in, in Dalfar, you can then compare and see how they're performing. So here you can compare the list <laughs> top 500, with a paper TC, and then you can see, okay, this one uh, brings brings me uh, way more connections. They're way more uh, better than this one, 
which are maybe more expensive. So I will, next time I'll, I'll go for the uh, cheaper leads, for example. So you can analyze that and, and decide uh, we, from which provider you're gonna buy the next leads from. Yeah, uh, this is a contact list uh, report. Uh, this German one, here's a uh, dollar statistic, also interesting. Uh, you can see um, um, answering machines uh, rate, uh, how many hang ups uh, there were, lost calls as well, answered call, connected, and the call in total. So, yeah, and you can also set it up either by day, weekday, or month. So you can filter as, as you wish. And also, depending on the, on the campaign, you can also filter them as well. And it's always updated live, this, this, these reports. So, uh, and you can share the link or not with third parties. It's, uh, yeah. It's all. It's a lot of numbers for uh, numbers. Uh, statistic junkies. So. Uh, well, the key the KPIs. So all all of the, all all of the, all of this that you see, you can extract and and then uh, work on it externally. Yeah. Inbound statistic because uh, you mentioned uh, that Dalfire is mostly outbound. Well, kind of, uh, but we also offer uh, inbound for 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 the customers that uh, do want to do inbound. And it is so that we recommend that customers do inbound because obviously your connect rate um, will be influenced whether or not your number is reachable. So if you're calling out and if, if someone then calls back the number and the number is not reachable, you're gonna get blacklisted way faster huh? yeah. if you're doing uh, cold calling. Right. So um, yeah, you can also set up uh, set it up that you also do um, inbounds with Alphar. And it's it's all work then here in the uh, in the call area. So uh, yeah, what, what what else can I say? Uh, we already talked about the API integration, and I uh, showed you some screenshots, the report statistics. We already addressed that you can uh, set up uh, set up your own uh, PBX uh, to conduct the calls and dial fire. Um, oh, maybe I didn't mention yet. Um, not only you can, um, not only you can automate uh, use the uh, automatic call, uh, predictive dollar, but you can also automate uh, sending emails. Because I think I mentioned before that uh, most most customers probably are calling manually, but also sending uh, emails manually. In Dialfire, you can set up a um, an email task. With a template, and then depending on on the information which you had filled in from the customer, maybe during the call, or maybe already you already have the the email from from the um, from when you bought the leads. But depending on the, the email, depending on the name, uh, an email is sent. You can also set up in on the task flow a a delay so that the customer maybe perhaps thinks that you really took the time to write the email, because perhaps if you just click. At the disposition send email and the email is sent right away probably the customer will think okay this is just um, a template email they sent and if you set up a delay um, yeah they will think okay they really did take the time to to write so you could do something like that you can um, you can create a an email task here the task menu so within within a campaign you have the call task where you import contacts to contact list to and then, like I mentioned before, depending on the dispositions, the contacts move within the, the, the campaign, okay? And obviously you can set up a task flow that, so that the contact goes through an email task and an email is sent. What, happen, what happens after the email is sent is up, is up to, for the customer to decide. Some do a follow-up, for example, uh, for the cases where they send an email is when they reached out to leads, but they could not close the sale or close the, uh, the sell the service or reach the what they wanted. So perhaps they send an email with information, and once the email is uh, goes through the email uh, task and an email is sent, the email goes back to either to the original call task or to a different call task, where uh, for example follow up is set three days later to to call that customer again to ask them, hey, did you see the email? You had the, the opportunity to take a look at it and, and to follow up on, on it, basically. Um, yeah, so um, Great. Here, here you have the call task. This is, I would say, a very important task. This is where you can 
change the uh, settings for the uh, predictive dialer, or you can set it up faster or slower. And obviously here, you can set up a uh, caller ID, so the number that will be displayed. Uh, but here in the script, um, we can also set up a script where the number is rotating, for example, just rotating as it is or rotating depending on certain information of, of, of the fields, so for example, the zip code or, or the state like we mentioned before. Okay. And uh, yeah, here uh, you can also set up the automatic call recording like we mentioned before. And uh, we also mentioned before the call limitations. So this is how you could uh, set up, for example, a failed call attempts. For example, if you would set it like this to four in total, after it reaches more than four failed call attempts a contact, it will get the status failed. And when it gets the status failed, at least by default in a simple campaign, it moves to the export negative. So and the export negative, um, well, like the name it implies, it's a task um, to export the contacts that end up in there, basically. So in a simple campaign, this is how it comes by default, but obviously it can be changed according to uh, what you need. And also maybe interesting for the customers who were asking about integrating with CRMs uh, is to use then th this web of task where you can then um, set up, send the information and also receive information. Uh, in Dalfire with API communication. And yeah, so here's the email one, which I was just mentioning. Uh, one has to set up here the email preferences and um, and then you can set up a, a template, obviously two. Uh, you can set up in curved brackets email and then an, um, an email is sent to um, the email that was either filled in when importing or during the call uh, the email that was registered in the in the field in the call mask. So yeah, we we um, we have a um, a, a transparent uh, pricing structure. Uh, nobody asked about the pricing yet, but I guess uh, we can uh, go for that topic now. And um, yeah, it's a pay-as-you-go platform, so there are no commitments. You don't need to. You can just create an account if you're curious. It, it should come with a test credit, uh, which you can use for the calls. And um, yeah, there are no commitments, so there's no contract. There are no fixed costs, which is a really big advantage. Um, a lot of the companies um, really appreciate not having fixed costs. So um, I think that's that's a plus. And um, this is this is uh, the pricing of Dalfar. So it's once there's a connection, you um we don't you, see it, you pay uh, for that connection early sorry we don't see the pricing uh we see uh another okay let me take uh let me open it because i'm not sure this is the us plan uh da -da -da -da. i think it is let me take a look all right so so this is the uh this is the pricing and this is for the destination you're calling. So it, it doesn't matter where you're located. So let's just say you call US customers, but you're not located in the US. You can also call the US and your price reference will always be the destination you're calling. Obviously, if you uh, if you have it set up with uh, VoIP.ms, you do not pay this. Okay. So uh, what you pay is the um, the switching fee. And uh, the platform, and obviously if you're using the predictive uh, dialer, you also have to add up this. So we're talking about price per minute if the, once there is a connection, okay? So your, your customers, they, um, they, re they are registered here in the... Uh, in, uh, yeah, that's, in uh, the that's the part that I, yeah, I was uh, referring a little bit uh, uh, before. So um, this is the... API uh, interconnection between VoIPMS and Dalfire. So if you enable your your API in VoIPMS uh, and use the credential in this page, after that, with your Dalfire account, you, that will uh, use VoIPMS trunks to generate the calls. Uh, not generate the calls, but generate and end all the, the PSTN connection. Uh, phone connection uh, okay. for your dialer. Yeah. I, 
I, I just got corrected by my colleague that, that is watching the webinar. Uh, so I have to do an addendum. Um, according to her, uh, this switching fee is not applied uh, with your with your partnership uh, with VoIP.ms. So if you go for VoIP.ms and Dialfire, um, yeah, you're not, not charged for the switching fee. So but that would be in this case, the platform, the platform. cost. And if you're dialing predictive, yeah. that's the, the point of it then you have to add this as well. If you set up a, a voice recording, then you would have to add this as well. So it depends like on the that. features that you use. I like that. Uh, I like that. <laughs> exactly. Great. Uh, I have a question from uh, David R. Uh, is it possible to record the dial pad answer from a customer? So like a survey, uh, let's say uh, you're generating a campaign and you're asking uh, how good is my service? Uh, uh, from uh, dial from one to nine and they press like let's say nine to say excellent is it something that dial fire will uh, record in 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 the call i mean will will it be able to record the the dtmf uh, tone of of this survey or maybe it's a feature request wait, wait. i don't know what you mean to to analyze the the uh, the call and to um, then uh, uh, transcribe or it's not to transcribe. It's really like uh, if you're getting a if you initiate a survey, uh, but you're asking the prospect to uh, to answer to the survey by dialing on the dial pad. And let's say from one to nine, how is my service? Nine is excellent, one is bad, uh, and the prospect is saying like nine uh, is is pressing nine on his dial pads so it, it's saving it is it saving the the survey response uh i don't know yes we 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 do have um uh the in, ivr interaction um, not very long ago i think it was last year september if i'm not mistaken or october we re we released uh two different tools um, the IVR and call analyzer, and we we do have uh, that, so we can take feedback by by voice, and 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 yeah, and and real time speech recognition is is also supported. Okay, so it's something we have. Okay, good, and uh, maybe uh, and also by uh, dial pad uh, feedback. Okay, so I think yeah. it's answered the questions. Perfect. Uh, Jason, uh, we will send. Uh, Jason is asking, uh, "What is the cost per minute?" Uh, I can, and and after that, to say that uh, you can see it now. So, uh, in any cases, we will send the recording to everybody after uh, the webinar. So, feel free to contact us if you have an additional question about the cost. So, it will be a pleasure either for VoipMS or uh, Dalfire to uh, provide you pricing uh, based on your uh location and where you want to call um so yes uh we can work with with you to uh, figure it out um it's really a large pricing because it's international so and every destination has a different we cannot just give a specific pricing uh however uh, we'll be able to provide the needed information when it when it when, when the time comes it's, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, I would say that um, if if you if you like what you saw, obviously in 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 one hour you can only talk about so much. Uh, but if you uh, liked what you saw and what you heard, I would invite you um, to book a, a meeting uh, with us to create an account in Dialfire, and um, yeah, we take it from there. We can um, then look to your specific needs help you set up your campaigns. And uh, yeah, the sign up is, is free of charge. Like I mentioned before, it comes with free test credit, uh, which you can use for the calls. And you don't need to put any credit card details to, to start. So uh, yeah, I would say if you're curious, um, take a look. You don't have uh, anything to lose. Great. One last question from Frank uh, is asking, where is your head office uh, from VoIPMS is uh, in Terrebonne, Quebec, uh, Canada. So uh, we're based in Canada uh, for uh, 
uh, Dalfire, uh, if I recall correctly, Germany. Yeah, we're 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 based in Germany. Uh, the the platform, um, if I'm not mistaken here, if I'm not, I will ask my colleague to correct me. I would say the platform is around Dialfire is uh, six or seven years old, but um, the owner already has experience in in this in this area of telecommunications for over twenty years now, and we are based in Germany, in the city of Dresden. Um, so we have our own office here in in Dresden, which is one and a half hours, uh, one, one hour and 30 minutes away from Berlin to the south. So direction of Czech Republic. Good. And it was also developed by us. So it's our platform developed it's, by us uh, yeah, here homemade. and homemade. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So if you don't mind, uh, I will uh, take over the screen sharing and I will uh, I will present a little bit about uh, VoIP.ms. All right, so um, who is VoIP.ms? Uh, VoIP.ms, uh, it's a Montreal-based, like I said, Montreal uh, Turban is a close city from Montreal. Uh, Montreal-based voice over IP uh, company founded in 2007, so it's our 15 years anniversary this, this year. We provide a vast range of uh, telephony feature or enhance communication uh, to simplify your business communication. So we are a hosted PBX uh, and a SIP drunk provider. Uh, we offer DID numbers in uh, more than 1,500 rate centers across North America and in more than 60 countries. We offer international calls in more than 125, but it's close to 150 now. Uh, Toll-free number, call conference, SMS, MS, and more. Um, so... That's a little glance uh, of VoIP MS pricing uh, or incoming rates start at 85 cents per number per month with a rate of uh, 9 ten of a cents per minute. And uh, for Canada outgoing, uh, it's about 5 ten of a cents uh, or half a cents in cent <laughs> per minute for Canada. Uh, for United States, it's the same price for phone numbers for the DIDs itself. Uh, and then incoming rates at nine ten of a cent, and, but for the outgoing rates, it's uh, one cent per minute. Uh, depending on the volume of your call uh, every month, we can uh, talk about the uh, uh, volume discount, of course, for the traffic. So feel free to reach out to me if uh, you have a sig significant uh, call volume for Canada uh, or United States, but also uh, international calling. Um, why VoIP MS? Because uh, we are fully hosted, a little bit like uh, <laughs> Dalfire, uh, feature rich, bring your own solution, and pay as you go. That's the four pillar of uh, VoIP MS. After that, uh, or certified partner uh, card. That's a little glance of uh, the ecosystem around VoIP MS. VoIP MS, as a bring your own solution, we partner with all the best manufacturer and VoIP solution on the market uh, from uh, hosted PBX uh, to cloud PBX, uh, on-premise or even IP phones manufacturer. VoIP MS has a certification uh, to work uh, seamlessly with 99% of those. So feel free uh, to check our wiki uh, to uh, know more about it. We have a uh, uh, extended knowledge base for, for uh, pretty much all the device on the market. Our best feature, uh, as I mentioned very earlier, VoIP MS is a hosted PBX platform. So uh, we offer all the hosted PBX capabilities uh, for your business phone system from IVR, but also to uh, virtual fax, call hunting, ring room, call forwarding, everything that a uh, usual business needs as a phone system, um, VoIP MS is covering you. We offer a lot of uh, security feature uh, from uh, two-step verification for, um, I, uh, to a uh, foreign IP guard. Uh, we have a lot of security feature to make sure that your account and phone system is safe. So. It's a little glance of what we offer, but uh, given overall idea of the security features. SIP drawing an API. I mentioned it several times during the webinar. Uh, VoIP MS offer a SIP drawing solution. We have uh, more than 50 
more than 50 location uh, around the globe. Canada, United States, Amsterdam, United Kingdom, and France and uh, Australia and Sydney. Um, we have uh, call uh, not call center, uh, data centers. Sorry, um, where you can connect your endpoint, your your or your PBX directly to us to have a better latency, jitter, and all the benefit that have a closer connection gives. Or network is also monitored 24 seven, uh, seven, seven day a week, all, all year long. So we'll make sure that all our services are running um, all day long. I was mentioning about the, the API earlier. So the API is what uh, makes WFMS and Dialfire connected. Um, we have an open API. You can build your own application on top of it. You can build uh, your own um, uh, CRM connection if you want to you can build uh, uh, pretty much anything that you want to so far uh, it gives you the ability to uh, buy phone numbers to uh, use or SMS MMS capabilities to uh, a, a different platform you can use uh, this to uh, retrieve voicemail uh, initiate uh, porting if you want to uh, there's so much you can do with the API. Of course, it needs a little bit of development time most of the time, but uh, we, we have a very large uh, API library. About the financial features uh, or business model. So it's prepaid and pay as you go. You have to add your credit card and add some fun into your account. And every minute that you will spend will be deducted from this balance. We are self-service. We have a smart and auto, uh, smart and secure auto replenishment. So every time your balance is running low, you can set up a auto replenish balance. Uh, we are fully contractless, and we offer free porting across Canada and United States for toll-free and local DID. Uh, for international porting, might have some fees in depending on the countries. And we support uh, quite a lot of countries to port uh, your phone numbers uh, outside of Canada and United States. Uh, but uh, simply contact us if you want to know more about that. A little bit about uh, our success story. So uh, VoIPMS has worked with a lot of businesses uh, over the time. Um, I've chose these trees, uh, businesses, uh, to show that VoIPMS is very suitable for small businesses and medium businesses, but also for large enterprise with multiple branch across uh, across a country like uh, wide like Canada. <laughs> uh, for instance, Toys R Us uh, use uh, VoIPMS for their eighty two store across the uh, across Canada to connect all their endpoint, uh, but also use VoIPMS as their uh, VoIP provider for their contact center. Uh, Icon Health Fitness, same as, as well, but not only for Canada, but all across the globe. And cPanel, uh, it's a well-known uh, CMS, is using VoIPMS for all their contact center in, in their headquarters in Houston. So VoIPMS is it's very flexible depending on your need. It can be good for a small needs, but also it can be good for large enterprise needs. It's, it, can, it can scale up pretty easily. A little bit about VoIPMS team. VoIPMS uh, here, <laughs> it's me in the middle. I like to uh, show this picture. Um, we are a diverse team from uh, from three countries, uh, Mexico, Canada, and the United States. Um, we're more than uh, 50 employees uh, with an average seniority of five years, uh, five years employment at VoIPMS. So we are gear. Uh, to support everybody uh, with a very good knowledge in VoIP. Um, we are also geared to support everybody across North America in French, in English, and in Spanish. So yeah, the little accent that you hear here is a French accent. Uh, it's not Spanish. Um, and we offer uh, technical support 
and chat ticket and emails. For the following month, oh, a little typo here. Uh, you you will be able to use the code Dalfire to sign up to VoIPMS and to get uh, a ten dollar bonus on your first deposit. So uh, enjoy, and uh, it will help uh, help you to do a lot of testing. Ten dollar in, uh, in at nine ten of a cents is a lot of minute. <laughs> here here is my contact detail. Um, Feel free to reach out to me whenever you need. My email address, my toll free direct toll free number. Uh, if there's anything, I can uh, reassign you to uh, to one of our account manager or to a support uh, team or customer success uh, team as well. So uh, we we can help you on board with uh, Dalfire and VoIPMS together. And that's pretty much it for me. I don't know if uh, there's any other question. There was a lot during the. I think we cover uh, pretty much all the questions during the webinar. So uh, we will uh, end this for today. Um, any additional uh, comment on your end, uh, Rui? Yeah, I would say um, I, I really liked uh, uh, this webinar to to be able to speak about Dialfire. And I really liked your presentation as well. Um, I, I maybe uh, jokingly, I might ask, uh, is there anything you cannot do? <laughs> uh, so you we really you really have a good um, uh, extensive portfolio, and and by adding Dialfire to to it, I think you you're really profiting uh, as well. It will generate uh, uh, traffic for you, and um, yeah, I think it will. Like I I mentioned already before, I think it will. Uh, time will tell, but I think it will be a really symbiotic relationship between both uh, companies. Yeah, Dialfire is really covering up uh, a lot of uh, capability that uh, VoIPMS is not offering natively. So I think it's a really good partnership. Uh, the, your platform uh, is really covering up uh, another sphere uh, into the, the sales market, into the telemarketing and, call, and contact centers market. Uh, VoIPMS is really uh, a phone system. It's a, a business phone system for most and, and mostly. So you're really covering a part where we're blindsided, if I can say. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, the benefit of using both of us uh, together, it, it, it's it, it's really there. So I I, I see where uh, we can we can work together with this. Uh, so thanks uh, everybody to join the webinar today. Um, I will send the recording to everybody afterward and. Uh, I wish you to have a very nice uh, rest of the day, Rui. Yeah, you too, Philip. Have a nice day. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Yes.